Welcome to this week's edition of the Mike Bray Show. I'm your host, Tony Simeone, joined by the head basketball coach, Mike Bray. You coached this last week. You went 2-0. You went on the road to get a big win at Louisville at home against NC State. You get it done. What was your takeaway from the week? Well, anytime you can have a 2-0 week and we meet together, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good day. And, and, you know, it was two teams that had our number a little bit. You know, Louisville on the road, we hadn't won there since 2015. I thought we did some fearless stuff in the second half. I thought our defense was excellent. Our passing was excellent. And then NC State was one of those ugly, grinding, how do you escape kind of games. I give a lot of credit to our defense again to get us out with a win. You alluded to it, but I want to ask you about the psychological nature. Going down, you said you hadn't won at the Yum Center in nearly seven years. You hadn't beat NC State in over four years. To get those monkeys off the back, how big is that for you and your team? I, th I think it gives you confidence, Tony. There's no question about it. Like I said, Louisville had our number. State, NC State had had our number. Um, I think it gives this group, especially these seniors mm -hmm. who had not had a lot of success against Louisville or NC State, Leshevsky, Goodwin, Hub, you know, I, I think it gives them a lot of confidence moving forward. Coming up next, it's the Game Breakdown segment where we look back at all the men's basketball action. This is the Mike Bray Show presented by TireAct.com. It's now time to break down the Louisville win. You guys won by 12 in this game, but it was a really tough one. Going into that environment, Coach, is never easy. You hadn't won there in nearly seven years. As you got ready for this game, what was the message going into the contest? You know, it's such a great basketball atmosphere. I think our guys are really excited to play. 16,000 people. They're retiring a jersey of yeah. Russ Smith, so there was energy in the building. And man, did Louisville come out firing. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to hold on for dear life in the first half. Uh, but I thought in the second half, we got the tempo under control. We defended the three-point line better. And then we got rolling offensively. And when we start getting into our rhythm of passing and finding open people and getting our feet set on three-point shots, it's, uh, it's really fun to watch. Let's talk about the first half. Early on was a really weird start, I thought. You turned it over, I think, on your first three possessions, and then you went 10 for your first 10. I mean, the offense was clicking. I mean, throughout the entire game, it was great, but in that first 10 for 10 stretch, what did you see that stuck out to you? Well, it was, you know, I think it was a great game to watch. Everybody texted me after the game, because, and I told the ref at halftime, I said, you know, the ball's going in. This is a fun game. Ball's going in the basket. Um, you know, we were in a pretty good offensive rhythm. We were excited to play. I just thought, we played a little too fast along with them. Mm -hmm. And that's why they had seven more points than us at halftime and 45 and had us on our heels. Um, second half, much better tempo. You mentioned the first half where they were, I believe they shot nine of 13 from three. You guys shot 65%, and as you said, you were down by seven. I'm not sure I've ever seen a team shoot 65% from the floor and be trailing by seven at halftime. So when you were in the locker room, what was the message? Because they were pouring them in from spots that you weren't expecting them to make the shots. You know, I, I'm glad you brought that up. I said, look, there's no way they're gonna keep firing like that, and I don't think they can fire with us. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people in the league can shoot with us if we're taking good shots. So let's hang in there. Let's keep getting out on def defending the arc and let's make sure we control the tempo a little bit better. And I thought we did that. A big story in a lot of these games recently has been the way you guys shoot the three. But I thought the way you came out of the locker room was really impressive. Paul Atkinson Jr. got you going with a big end one. He had some big baskets. He kind of flies under the radar now with the way you're shooting the three. What did you like from Paul in the second half? Well, he is our low post presence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with our shooters around him, it's hard to double him. It's hard, and he's such a good passer. Um, so we love going in there. First play to second half, they go zone, we go to him three-point play, mm -hmm. which is a good sign, you know, to start the second half. But we want him getting low post touches, and he's very unselfish kicking it out to our guys that are open. Someone that knocked down a couple big threes, and again, also kind of flies under the radar, is Trey Wirtz. He hit three big threes for you in this game, a couple in the second half. He went over 1,000 career points in this game. A lot of those, of course, at Santa Clara before he transferred here. But it seems like he plays a really sound game for you, even when he's not filling up the stat sheet. What did it mean for you to see him go over 1,000 points and contribute in a big way in this one? I think anytime you go over 1,000 points in a college career, and again, he did it in two places, it tells you how powerful and consistent a career you've had. And we need to get him going. You know, he's a guy that I'm still trying to figure out how to help and get going. We need his scoring and open shoot. He is great with the ball, his assist to turnover. You look at him and Hub's assist to turnover together. I mean, they are just really moving the ball and, and finding people. And he's made improvements mm -hmm. 
as far as being a physical defender. I wanted to bring up someone else to Cormac Ryan. Your team, I think everybody had two or more field goals in this game. I mean, everybody was pouring it in. He had a couple big threes too in the middle portion of this second half. What did it mean to see all seven guys contributing in this game? I thought it was the one game really in this stretch where all seven had a huge impact. You know, we have had games that we've won where you go, you know, five played well, two didn't, four played well, three didn't. You know, that was a all seven kind of effort. And the more we can capture that, the better. Okay, let's talk about the freshman, Blake Wesley. Takes our breath away every now and then. It was 62-62. He scored nine points in a row, goes on a 9-2 run by himself. Couple of threes and and one. He was magnificent in the second half. What impressed you about his performance? You know, one of the things we talked to him about was more focused practices, being concentrated, you know, which all young guys have a hard time of being able to practice, you know, consistently. I thought he had two great days of focus practice and better shot selection. And those shots that he got were all part of the movement and the offense and they were wide open. And I think that's an area I want to keep coaching him you know, on. Let me, let me follow up on that. How do you as a coach or as a coaching staff coach shot selection? Do you show him film? Do you get in the gym and show him spots he can look for his shot? What's that process well, like? Well, I think it's both. There's no question in the midst of five on five, we do a lot of five on five in our practice. I'm a big believer in you, you can't learn how to play unless you play mm-hmm. together. And when a guy takes a bad one, you can kind of say, now, hey, wait a minute. I don't know if that was a good shot. And a lot of times what's great is his teammates will go, yeah, that's not a good one. And certainly film, but uh, that's one of the things. We've been very efficient offensively here through my years because we've under we've been great with the ball, but we've under, also, for the most part, understood what a real good shot is. 63% is what you guys shot from the field on the road. I mean, that is hard to do. And it's gotta be one of the most complete games you've played, definitely on the road this year. To see your team execute in that environment, what did it mean? Yeah, I I am just so thrilled on how this group has taken ownership of itself, the mental and physical toughness that has developed since the Indiana game during this stretch. Uh, And again, I go to our leadership. I go to the hub Lashevsky goodwin triangle of really setting the tone and dragging this group like we, we want to do something this year. This is it. You went on the road. It was the first time you got really a win. You didn't have to sweat out down the stretch. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you the last question on this game. What did it feel like to not have to sweat out the final minutes? Well, to be honest with you, I looked at the scoreboard two or three times when we were up double digits because I didn't believe it. <laughs> you know, we have not been up double digits, and I'm doing the math, and I'm going, is that right? Is that score right? We've got a 10-point lead with four minutes to go. Um, but I think what you saw was solid defense and then – you know, what our programs, you know, lightning strike kind of offense, mm-hmm. which can help your defense. When you can be so efficient like that, it can demoralize a team on the other end and it helps your defense and your defensive rebounding. Coach, appreciate it. When we come back, we'll break down the win against NC State on the Mike Bray Show presented by TireAct.com. It's now time to break down the win over NC State. Coach, you came into this game back at home, the first of three in a row at home. Of course, a lot of people, myself included, are looking ahead to Virginia and Duke, but you have an NC State team on the schedule that has had your number as of late. You hadn't beat them in the last four years. What was your message to the team to ensure that they focused on this game on Wednesday night? Well, with everything coming at us, you know, over the next 10 days, we kind of just segmented Monday and Tuesday practice and Wednesday's game. That's it. I don't want to talk about anything else. Two good days of practice and Wednesday's prep. And we knew we were going to play a really gifted offensive team that just scored 77 on Virginia and made 12 threes. Guards are going to take you off the dribble. And that's the scouting report on us, you know, open up the floor and drive us. Mm -hmm. And, And I thought we really held our own defensively, really for all 40 minutes to sit down in a stance and make it tough getting by us. I wanted to ask about your defensive approach because you mentioned it, uh, what they do, but they have a trio that's got the most points of any trio in the conference in Smith, Sebron, and Hellam. So when you game plan for three guys like that, what do you have to do? What did, they, what did your team have to really key on to ensure they didn't go off against you? I think the key was that our bigs, Nate and Paul, could really help off of their guy because their lone big was really not a scorer or a shooter. Mm -hmm. And I thought both of them, especially Nate in the second half, was fabulous at coming over on their guards, hanging around, sometimes switching it. Mm -hmm. 
just to make it tough for those guys to drive and shoot runners. We also were very aware of the three-point line, and we rode our zone for about six or seven possessions in the second half that gave us a couple deflections. And um, But, uh, you know, the, the help when you're in those areas to be able to help off of a guy who's maybe not a scorer, we've grown so much in that area where we, we're there to help and we're unselfish about helping on a really good player. It's a really different game than the Louisville game. Of course, he shot 63% against Louisville in the first half against NC State, just 38% from the floor. You mentioned, though, your defense was good. Another guy I want to highlight, Paul Atkinson Jr. I thought he was really active with his hands. Gave you some scoring inside when maybe the shots weren't falling from the perimeter in the first half. And we need him to score. Like, like throwing it into the post, especially against teams like NC State that come out and pressure us, mm -hmm and take away passing lanes and put ball pressure on us. Now we're better shaped to handle it because we have a Blake Wesley now, another handler yeah. with Prentice and with Trey and Cormac. But when we can throw it into the post and you're up in us, it kind of flattens the defense. And then he has the footwork to go and score. The one thing we're trying to clean up with him is when you're one-on-one, -on -one, go ahead and try and score. He's been almost too unselfish. And that's when his turnovers have come, when he's kicking it out. I think, Paul, I think you have an angle to score. So a work in progress there with him, but he means so much to us. As you said, it was a different game. They, they kind of grind it down. It was 30-30 at halftime, and they come out, hit you with a punch. 35-30, you weren't really moving the ball well offensively. You call the timeout. I'm always interested when you call one of these early second half timeouts down by five. What was your message? And also, what was the team talking about in that huddle? I think the more important part of it, Tony, was what the team talks about. This group has been put up against it you know I think back to starting with Pittsburgh and how we and and different play we come out of timeouts and what they talk about and how they kind of regroup mentally and say all right focus and here we got to really be attention to detail on both ends of the floor we have really shown some cool traits so it's a little bit more some suggestions from me <laughs> and them talking about what they're gonna do it reminded me of the Howard game, and it was almost an identical score. I look back at Howard, it was 36-31. You call the timeout, your team was down by five. Nate Lashesky came out against Howard and hit a three and got a three-point play. In this game, you're down by five. Nate Lashesky comes out, hits back-to-back -back threes, gets a dunk, he goes on an 8-0 run by himself. He was pretty fired up. He got the crowd engaged, too. How big was that moment for Nate? I am uh, so impressed with his demeanor. You know, he is playing like a man and a veteran. And you're right, I mean, the Howard game in here, he has made big plays for us. He's wanted to make them more mm -hmm. now in his senior year, you know, and say, I can figure out how to do this. I do give our guards credit, especially Hub. I thought Hub was unbelievable finding him in that segment. And then knowing, like, he's rolling, let's find him again. And, and so I think that's where our group has been really smart offensively. They find out who's going pretty good and they try and get him a touch. You mentioned Prentice, let's talk about him. He played 40 minutes in this game, didn't sit out for a single second, five assists, no turnovers. He's had some games this year where he's turned the ball over, but in conference play, his assist to turnover is almost five to one. I mean, it's been remarkable what he's done in conference play. I talked to you after the game. You just said this is one of those games you didn't feel like you could take him off the floor. You know, with them picking up full court and Blake is a freshman against college guys that are pressing, I, I just didn't feel we could ever get him off the floor. And that was like the old days, him playing the full 40 and we'll get him some rest, you know, the next day. But, um, you know, the, the, there's... We've won nine out of 10. There's something about Hub being back in the starting lineup to jumpstart this thing. And having him getting himself right, he wasn't completely right. Kids go sure. through that. And us helping him get him right. He stirs the drink for us. He is my Mahomes. And, <laughs> and I've said it many times you know, through the years, he has been Mahomes in league play. Let's talk about the rest of the run. So Lashesky gave you the quick 8-0 spurt. And then, you know, we talked about it last night too. It was the senior class that came in that had not beaten NC State. Hub, Goodwin, and Lashesky go on a 15-0 run to extend the lead to 10. That was the big moment of the game. For the seniors to step up the way they have, you've been quick to point them out this year, the guys that have been here for all four years. What did that mean to you? I, I'm really proud of them. And I, and I know how hungry they were going into this season. And I'm very proud. I was asked before the Pittsburgh game, you know, is there pressure on your seniors and to do things? I said, yes, there is. And I'm very proud to date on how they've delivered in that and, and have kind of 
carried us with. Um, they deserve it because they've worked so hard and they're team guys. Let's just hit on Dane Goodwin while we're talking about the seniors. Four of seven from three again. So he came in in his last nine games, they had him at 56% from three. He was 57% last night. He somehow raises his season percentage from three to 49%. I mean, he's shooting the ball just lights out right now. Do you ever think he's going to miss? I mean, what, what's going through your head when he puts it up? Yeah, I'm shocked when he misses, quite frankly. He missed a couple in the first half. We got ran some stuff for him. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, I mean, he, he, because he's so understated, you know, he is a player of the year candidate with what he's doing, and his team is winning. I'm, I'm always big on the player of the year should come from a team that's up there in the top tier. Mm -hmm. he, and he's doing that, and we're doing that. And it, it's machine-like. Now, where he's made great strides, he's really improved defensively. Mm -hmm. Some of the one-on-one -on -one defense against physical, athletic, NC State, Louisville guys, he's made great strides in that area with strength. But uh, as far as finding him and taking good shots, again, he plays with a, a group of guys that know he's important and they know how to find him. Let me ask you just one thing about his game that I watch as a novice that I think he's improved on. I want to know where, where, what your opinion is. I think his ability to shoot on the move mm -hmm. has really improved this year. I mean, it seemed like when I watched Dane in the past, he could knock him down when he's squared up. He's now able to move left to right, right to left, and get himself square in motion. I think of the three kind of falling from the corner last night. I mean, it seems like he's really taken that part of his game up and it's added a whole new dynamic to his score. Uh, I agree, and, and, he, and he's, got, he's gotten even better off the shot fake one dribble to 15 feet instead of going all the way in there. But, you know, right now he feels so good about his stroke. I still think he turns some shots down. Mm -hmm. I thought there were a couple that came to him with, you know, how he's shooting it. It's not bad if he cranks one up over a hand because I think it's going in. Um, but the efficiency, the all-round game, uh, but a very machine-like preparation in this young man. And again, a player of the year candidate. I want to ask you about the freshman Blake Wesley. Only was 3 of 16 from the floor, but I thought he got a huge steal and a breakaway basket for you. There was also a possession where he missed a layup, got two offensive rebounds, got to the line. He had a, some great passes to Dane to set him up for a couple of those threes. It seems like even when he doesn't have it going offensively, your team is still really comfortable putting the ball in his hands late shot clock, and he's finding other ways to contribute and create when he might not be having his best offensive performance. I think he's been mature beyond his years when shots aren't going in, it hasn't completely taken him away mentally. Mm -hmm. He's able to bounce back and plug back in. I've taken him out maybe when he's in a rough stretch. He doesn't get mad, he doesn't get frustrated, and he goes back in and he's back in gear. And and that's maturity, you know, and, and again, I think he has great trust and the assistants talk to him when he's over there. Um, but I think our guys know, obviously, him with the ball at the end of a clock is good for us, and we talk, he was able to get to the rim a couple times, and at that last timeout, I said, you may want to kick now. They're really biting, and man, did he find Dane, and you know that was the dagger. You improved to 8-0 at home. You had another great crowd, great student section. I saw you asking them and pleading with them to come. They show up for you. You got a couple more home games that we'll preview here shortly, but again, to protect home court the way you have this year, what does that say about this team? No, it, it, it's, we, we've really believed here. And, and we got to keep that up. We've got unbelievable challenges coming, obviously, with Virginia and Duke here in the next couple of days. And, and uh, uh, we got to do that. And, and then our home crowd has been fabulous. And our student body, our legion, our legion behind us in the second half being loud when we're playing defense really helps our defense. I can't emphasize that enough. We need them back every home game left. Last one I have for you before we take a break. Obviously, you got the big ones coming up, Virginia and Duke, but you mentioned you've won nine of 10, you've won 10 of 12, really going back to Kentucky. Have you taken the time to just reflect on how this team has really turned this season around after maybe a rocky first month? I, I do, I'm, I'm proud of them. I'm very proud of them. And, and I think we, um, we came into it knowing we had to be better defensively. And I think we, were, we addressed that mm -hmm. through the summer. I don't think, I did a great job getting us as organized offensively because I was so distracted on how much we needed to improve defensively. And we weren't that bad offensively last year and had a lot of the same personnel back. But I think some of the things we did between Boston College and Kentucky with some predictable movement and some structure offensively has helped our guys with more of a plan. And, and that's really helped us. Coach, appreciate it. We'll step aside and come back with more on this week's edition on the Mike Bray Show presented by TireAct.com. 
It's now time for this week's edition of Irish Intel. Coach, we haven't talked a ton about defense during Irish Intel. It's been a lot of great offense this year, but I wanted to point out this possession. You guys force a shot clock violation with some great on-ball defense. Well, one of the things we really have gotten better at is being connected as five guys joined at the hip. This is just activity. Obviously, Prentice has active hands. We're on the floor. We're rotating. We get back and we recover. We end up switching a situation here active again, deflection here. Now we're getting low in the shot clock. Worst thing to do would be to foul, right? Trey does a great job staying down. We're disciplined and we force a shot clock violation. That's just great defensive patience. And it's an area where we've really gotten better. Yeah, and we were dedicated to it starting in June. All right, coach, so this is in the midst of your 15-0 run. Nate Leshesky has really sparked you guys to start out of the timeout uh, when you were down by five. You're now up by five here. He makes a great defensive play that leads to another three. He is such an anchor defensively. He ends up switching here on a guard and just rides with him and makes a great defensive play. And then our quarterback here is smart enough to know, you know what, he's just made one. I'm going to get him another one. And I just think his whole vibe is so confident right now. But I can't, I can't say enough about what Nate does defensively in the back there, being unselfish, rotating, anchoring over, and then to convert here and understand your personnel. This is a senior point guard knowing, I got a guy who's going, he's getting this one. I was gonna ask, how much of this is Prentice Hub being a senior, a veteran? So much of being a point guard isn't just distributing, it's knowing who to distribute to and when in the game. He knows the hot hand is with Nate right now, right? He does, and, and there's two guys that have played a lot of basketball together since their freshman year. It's really cool to see him find the guy that he came in with you know, four years ago and find him and uh, uh, there was no doubt, he, you know, he was in a mode. Nate, you know, was in such a mode. But uh, Nate Lashevsky doing on, on both ends of the floor right now. All right, Coach, this is in the final minute of the game against NC State. You're up six. You guys have been comfortable going to Blake Wesley deep in the clock. He's going to find a way to create instead of Dane Goodwin for the dagger. Well, this is a big possession, and we like Blake having that ball at the end, and, and, and his teammates know, give it to him, ball screen for him, and then have your hands ready. And he makes a great adjustment as they help to find Dane for the dagger right there. And, and that's the growth of Blake Wesley, of understanding the weapons around him and when to go to the hole and when to kick it out. But just a great read right here. We've got Hub over there, we got Dane over there with their hands ready, and Dane with a quick release, and uh, no doubt, he is a dagger guy. I wanna go back and just look at it real quick. Blake attracts the attention of four defenders <laughs> here. He's not had his best offensive game, but it just tells you how much the conference fears his ability to get to the rim, right? Yeah, the scouting report, Tony, is out on him, and we talked in the timeout, I said, Blake, you're probably gonna have to kick this one. You're not gonna get to the rim. And, you know, he made me, you know, makes me look good as a coach, but it's just, and he avoids the charge here too. Mm. You know, he's in the air, but he kind of glides through both people. But with his length, he can make that play. They overhelp, and Dane knows, three seconds on the shot clock, I'm firing. Catch and fire, and, you know, just a great execution right there. And we've been in, you know, we have been in a lot of hard games. Mm -hmm. That's one of my messages. I say, we've been in more hard, we, we're better at winning hard games. Mm -hmm. Guess what, Saturday and Monday are hard games. <laughs> that does it for this week's edition of Irish Intel. When we come back, we'll have Irishography on the Mike Bray Show presented by TireRack.com. So Matt, the team's playing really well right now. You guys have won nine of the last 10, 10 of your last 12. What do you think's been working well for the team as of late? I, mean, I think we're a really old team, which is helping us. Uh, these guys have played together for a long time. And the vibe they have playing together is really awesome. Uh, just coming to practice every day, like there's an energy on this team that's you know really infectious and we feel real good about ourselves. I'm thinking back to the Boston College game, probably the low point of the season for the team. I want to ask you, was there anything specifically that stuck out between that and the Kentucky game when you guys have really gone on this run that maybe turned the season around? And that week after the Boston College game, uh, practice was real contentious and you know, guys were really going at it and uh, holding each other accountable. And uh, we felt really good uh, after that, uh, just really being able to get together and uh, 
keep playing like this. Let me ask you about practice because you know you haven't been on the floor a ton this year, but I know practice is a place where you can always have an impact. How do you approach practice, and how do you try to go out there and ensure that you can help the team get better each and every week? Well, I try to you know first of all help the team get better, um, and then on top of that, trying to help build my game a little bit. And I know I've played a whole lot this year, but uh, continuing to get good practice reps and playing hard is all I can do. How do you keep that mindset? So how do you go to practice to try to keep improving your game so that if and when your number is called in a big spot this year, you're ready to perform? I just know that if my number is called, I have to perform, and that's what I'm going to do. So going every day and just you know, using that as a way to keep going is what I'm going to do. Let's talk about the home games this season. Last season, of course, there were no fans. This year, you guys are 8-0 at home. We talked about it before we started here that the crowds have been great at all these games. The fans, the student section have been awesome. What's it been like to play in these environments this year? Well, last year as a freshman, like we were going and there was no one in any of the arenas and it was, you know, it kind of took a toll on you a little bit, like having to really, you know, BYOE, bring your own energy. And we, we had to do that. But this year, like the fans have been awesome. You know, it's been really infectious for us, like getting into the, uh, our home gym and like seeing you know, 2,000 students just yelling, it's awesome. I want to ask you about your journey to Notre Dame. What went into the process to decide to come to school here and be a part of this team? As you were making your decision, what drew you to Notre Dame? Uh, I think when I came by visit, it felt like I really fit in here. Uh, all the guys on the team were awesome. And just, uh, you know, the education you get here is second to none. So that with basketball, like, coupled together is awesome. We've talked about hoops and, and how fun it's been to be in the gym, but I want to ask here in your, your year and a half on campus, what's maybe a couple of things that stick out from your experience at Notre Dame off the floor that you really value? Well, I think I have like some great friends here at Notre Dame. Uh, it's like awesome just, you know, walking around campus and seeing like some of those guys and being able to chop it up. And, uh, you know, being an athlete at like some schools, it's a little bit different, but here you're like a normal student. It's just, uh, you know, I have some awesome friends in my dorm and we really connect well. I want to ask you about the two games you have coming up, Virginia and Duke, two of the best programs in the conference, at least as of late. This isn't a stretch people have been looking forward to this season for a long time. What's the mindset of the team as you guys get set for these two big games? Yeah, we got we got three big games, kind of four big games. We got a long stretch here that we got to get some wins, and uh, you know I think we're second in the league right now. We really got to keep building on the momentum we have and get these uh, ones because they're big. I know I've heard you're saying that people are asking you for tickets to the Duke game. Do you have spare tickets you can share with everybody? I got four. <laughs> <laughs> Who's getting them? I don't know. I got to figure that out. <laughs> All right, well, it's going to be fun to watch on Monday. Appreciate it. Thank you. That does it for this week's Irishography. When we come back, we'll look ahead on The Mike Bray Show, presented by TireAct.com. It's now time to wrap up this week's episode. Coach, you're coming up on a really big two-game home stretch here. Virginia and Duke, two great teams coming up. Let's start with Virginia. They obviously have such a notable style. They're going to really slow it down. Great defense always under Tony Bennett. When you prepare for them, what do you have to key on as you get ready for the Cavaliers? Well, there's never been two different styles coming at us within three days in Virginia and Duke. Virginia grinding. You have to guard more off the ball screens. There's not as much a ball screening team tempo maybe last in the NCAA. And so you got to defend and you got to defend long possessions, which I think our guys are trained to. I think the biggest concern is you must be efficient offensively and you can't take quick shots or bad shots because now you're playing defense for another 30 seconds on the other end. You mentioned Duke coming up on Monday. They, of course, have a ton of talent. They always do. It's also going to be Coach K's last trip yeah. to Purcell Pavilion. I'm sure there's a lot that goes through the mind there. Of course, you're very familiar with him. As you prepare for Duke, what goes through your mind as you get ready for this game? Well, it's a racetrack now. Now we go from the Virginia grind to the racetrack, the Daytona 500. They are coming at us with really gifted offensive players. So a challenge for our defense. We're going to have to score to escape them. I don't think you just shut down gifted offensive guys. Obviously, the the building will be electric. And, 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 and you know, there's some emotion with – Coach K with Mike Krzyzewski. Mike gave me an opportunity in 1987 to be an assistant with him when I was a high school assistant. I'll always be indebted to him giving me an opportunity and training me to be a head coach. Coach, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a really fun week. That does it for this week's Mike Bray Show presented by TireAct.com.